Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome back to DevDreamer. So in this lesson, we're looking at CSS colors. Now CSS specifies multiple ways in which we can add color to our elements. So for example, we can add color by color name, such as red or blue. We can add color by hex value, RGB, RGBA, HSL and HSLA. Now, if you have no idea what any of those mean, don't worry because we're going to be looking at them in detail right now. Okay, so here we are then in our HTML file. We have a div with a class of frame. And then inside that, we have another div with a class of circle and a unique ID. So in this one, we've got color name, we've got hex, RGB, RGBA, HSL, and HSLA. And then finally, we have this H3 tag as well. Okay, so let's take a look at each of these in more detail. Let's head over to our CSS file. And what I've done is I've given each div a unique ID, which relates to how we're going to color it. So for example, with hex, we'll use a hex value, okay? Or hex code, as it's more commonly known. And for RGB, we'll use an RGB value, okay? So let's start at the top then. Let's first color our circle using a color name. So using a color name is the simplest way to add color because all you're doing is, well, using the color name. So for example, we could say, uh, we could say red, okay, and now that's gone red. Or we could say blue, green, uh, yellow, okay, you get the point. Very simple to add color in this way. All we do is simply type in the color. Now, as well as all these common colors, we can also use some colors which aren't as common to us, such as we can say burly wood, Dodger Blue, okay, and one of my favorites, Firebrick. Okay, so really simple. That's how to use the color name to apply color to our elements. Now, a downside to using the color name is that you are limited to only about 140 colors that the browser will recognize. Using one of these other methods to add color gives us a color selection of much more. In fact, using these other methods, we actually have access to 16 million colors. Okay, so yeah, if you really want a specific color, then you want to use one of these other values. But if you're happy with something like this, and that's what you're looking for, you can go ahead and use the color name like so. Let's change this to, let's go for crimson. Okay, now let's take a look at the hex value. So the hex value or hex code, as it's more commonly known, is made up of a hashtag symbol and then six alphanumeric figures. So for example, white as a hex code would be six Fs. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now this is actually white. Black would be six zeros. Now what these represent are shades of red, green, and blue. So these first two figures represent red, these two represent green, and these two represent blue. Now you can identify colors using a color picker such as you would find in uh, Photoshop or Sketch, but there's also a really good Google Chrome extension called Eyedropper. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So go and check it out. And basically, it's a way to identify the exact color on a web page. So I've got it installed. So you just click on this button here and click Pick Color from Web Page. And now we can use this little eyedropper here to find the exact color code of a color. So down here in the bottom right hand corner, it displays the hex code and the RGB value as well for whatever color we are hovering over. So for example, if I hover over this, you can see we have the hashtag over here, we have the hashtag and then the six Fs, okay? Remember that was the hex color code for white. If I hover over the black color, you can see we have our six zeros, which was the hex color code for black. What about red? Let's hover over that. Hmm, okay, well that gives us, well, crimson rather, we chose crimson. That gives us D, C, one, two, three, D. So let's say we wanted to use this color. Not to worry, we don't have to memorize it because if we simply click on this, then what this does is it brings up, and we click back into our extension here, it brings up the color codes for this color displayed in different ways. As you can see, we've got the hex code as well as uh, RGB right here and also HSL values too. So now that we've found this exact color by the hex code, we can use this in our CSS file by just copying this hex code here and then simply pasting it in here, like so. And now we have that exact color right here. There's also a built-in color picker in here as well. So click into here, click color picker. We can actually look for colors in here. So let's go for something like a lime green color. Okay. Um, yeah, something like that's fine. And all we do again is we simply copy this and simply paste it into 
uh, CSS file. And there we have it, we have that color in there. Now you might have noticed within this, we have another type of hex card with only three alphanumeric figures. And this is the exact same color, but it's just a shorter way to write it. So this here would give us the uh, crimson color. But using our black and white examples, we can do FFF, which is white, or we can do 000, which is black. Okay, so that's adding a color by hex card. Let's set this back to a uh, lime green color. Now let's take a look at RGB. Can you guess what RGB is short for? Well, again, it's short for red, green, and blue. And the way that we write this is we do RGB, and then in brackets here, we're looking for three figures. And again, each number here represents either red, green, or blue. The idea is that the first number represents the intensity of red, the second number represents the intensity of green, and the third, the intensity of blue. Each number ranges from 0 to 255. So for example, we can say, let's just do 0, 0, 0 first. Okay, gives us uh, black here. So this is red, this is green, and this is blue. Let's see what happens if we leave red and green to 0, but we set blue all the way to its max of 255. As you can see, we've got this blue color here. Let's do the same for green. 255, that's gone green. And as you guessed it, if we do the same for red, we'll get a red color, okay? In fact, if we set this number lower, we can see that our red color, so if we set this back to 255, if we set this number lower, let's go for, let's go for 200, okay? We can say that's gone slightly darker. Let's go for 100, okay, darker still, all the way down to zero, which would be black. Now again, we can ID RGB values with our color picker. So let's go ahead and do that. So, so let's go ahead and click on the tool up here. And again, let's use the color picker to select a color. Let's go for a nice purple color. Or a sort of purpley blue color at least. Yeah, let's go for this here. And this time, rather than selecting the hex code, we're going to select the RGB value. So let's just copy this. Okay, so here, 37 is the intensity of red. This is green and this is blue. As we're selecting blue, you can see that the blue value is a lot higher than the others. So let's go ahead and paste this into our CSS file. And there you have it. We have that exact color here. Okay, great. What happens though if you want this shade, but you want it to be slightly transparent? Well, this is where RGBA comes in. The A in RGBA stands for alpha. So if you were to copy this exact same color, so let's just copy this and paste it in here. What we want to do is rather than saying RGB, we want to use RGBA. So we just want to put an A at the end here. And now what we have access to is another value at the end here. And this value ranges from zero to one. Okay, so you can go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So we're specifying how strong we want the transparency to be. So 0 would be completely transparent, whereas 1 will be no transparency at all or full. Okay, so we get the full color here. So we could just play around with this. So we could say, for example, let's try 0 0.3. Okay, and as you can see, we've got that same color, but this time it's transparent. Let's increase this, let's go for 0 0.7. Okay, so that's slightly darker now. We can do, we can go right in the middle at 0.5. Okay, so this has a 0.5 transparency on it. So RGBA is used to specify the transparency of your chosen RGB color, okay? Let's take a look at the next one, which is HSL. Now, HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. What do those mean? Well, hue is a degree on the color wheel or circle uh, ranging from 0 to 360, okay? So 0 degrees to 360 degrees. 0 being red, 120 is green, and 240 is blue. So again, we're picking our colors based upon the colors red, green, and blue. The S stands for saturation. Saturation is, of course, how saturated we want the image to be. So 0% uh, would be a shade of gray, whereas 100% is the full color. And finally, lightness, as you probably guessed, quite straightforward. Lightness is how light we want our color to be. So 0% is black and 100% is white. So let's take a look at an example. We'll use our color picker again to find a color. Okay, let's, um, let's go for a nice orange color this time. Uh, 
uh, yeah, something like this is nice, nice and bright. We can simply copy the HSL code, like so, and we can paste this in here. Hmm, that didn't work. Let's think about why this didn't work. What do these three numbers represent? The first represents degrees. But this is okay because we're not expected to write um, a degree symbol here, so that's fine as it is. But what about these two? These two are percentages, and so all we're missing here is the percentage symbol. So keep an eye on our HSL circle. Let's add a percentage symbol to this, and finally one to this. And there you go, there's our color. And now we can just play around with these figures. So let's play around with the saturation figure. Let's go, let's change this from 90% to, let's go 30%. Okay, quite quite dull. Let's try 60%. Okay, and let's mess around with the lightness figure as well. Let's bring up the lightness on this. Let's go for, let's say, 80%. Okay, that's quite a pastel sort of colour now. Let's bring this up to 90%. Gives it a bit more colour. Okay, so if we do 30%, it's quite dull. 100% gives it more colour. Okay, so that's how we use HSL color values in CSS. And again, once you actually understand what these represent, okay, hue, saturation, lightness, you can sort of play around with these figures and change the color accordingly. Okay, and then finally, let's take a look at HSLA. And again, similar to RGB and RGBA, HSLA is all about the transparency. So A here, again, stands for alpha. So using HSLA is basically a way of specifying transparency on our color. Let's now go and find another color. Let's go for a yellow color. Want to be quite bright actually. Yeah, let's go for this here. So again, let's copy this HSL. And paste this in. Remember that now we're looking at applying a HSL A color, add our percentages, and now here, one will be the full color, or we could do 0 0.1, which is very transparent, or we could do something like 0 0.8, okay? So there you have it guys, that is how to apply colors in CSS. As you can see, you've got so many different options available to you ranging from basic quick colors to really drilling down into the exact color that you want. Okay guys, so go ahead and play around with these different methods of adding color to our projects. And of course, as we continue through our CSS tutorial, we will start looking at some really cool CSS3 properties like color gradients, where we'll be able to do some really cool stuff like this. Just get rid of this and paste this in. And look, this is really cool. We've actually applied a really nice color gradient to, uh, to the circle here. We'll be taking a look at that in a future lesson. But for now guys, if you found this helpful, make sure you click that like button down below. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.